Welcome to Nuanced Beauty. This podcast is intended to be a spot where my husband Bill and I will capture some complex thoughts and challenge us to hold to our opinions loosely so that we can see the beauty in others and the beauty in ourselves. I want to challenge us to dive deeper into those everyday topics and those sticky topics that we might shy away from, or we might bulldoze over others with our opinions. Because I think there's wisdom in this idea that if we all thought exactly the same, there would be no need for anyone else. So let's have a conversation and let's get nuanced. Hi guys, welcome back to Nuance Beauty. Hey everybody. So I was reading uh, through Reddit and I stumbled across this this subreddit called adulting, which caught my eye because it's such a silly uh, term. And I don't mean silly in a diminutive way, it's just it's an interesting term. There's, there's, there's some uh, funny aspects to it. But as I read, I was really struck by what, uh, what it meant to the people writing. And it, it seemed like a whole series of posts of people in their mid twenties or maybe into their thirties having these existential crises Mm -hmm. of, of, of meaning like, Hey, I got a degree, which I was told I was supposed to get Uh like, and then I got a job and these are all the things I've worked for the first 25 years of my life. And well, now what, like, what am I supposed to do? Is this it? Is this, I'm I'm just going to like work and eat and sleep for the rest of my life. Is this all like, what is, what is, what is this? What's my next checkbox? Yeah. Well, it's either like a, wow, I worked so hard for, for this or there's a, I kind of thought I would knew what, I thought I knew what I was doing when I By got this to point. this point. Like yeah. growing up, I saw people who had degrees and jobs and I'm like, oh, th- those guys have their stuff together. Uh-huh. And now, well, I'm in that spot. I have a degree and a job, but I don't feel like I have my stuff together. Yeah. So is there, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Like expectations, what you expected things to be are not quite in alignment yeah. with what they actually are. Is either something wrong with me or there's something wrong with life. But either way, it's this big existential question yeah. uh, that I think I think is uh, really prevalent and under discussed or over discussed, but discussed in memes. So it's not very productive. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was about to say. For me, um, adulting hashtag adulting. Um, adulting. The first time I heard the term adulting, um, we we got married and we moved to St. Louis. Um, and started renting a townhome. Bill went out to sea for his first job. It was Almost like, immediately. Yeah, yeah. It was like the second week in our in our uh, new home, newlyweds, and he headed out. Juices. And you got um, this right. Yes. And so I'm like starting my job too, and we're renting this townhome. And a girlfriend from college, who was one of my bridesmaids, was passing through, and I told her that she could stay, um, like on her way because she was headed to um, the army. She commissioned army officer uh, when we graduated, and so she was, uh, you know, stopping for a weekend to stay with me on her way to her first station. And she, we were chatting. She's like, wow. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we're like, we're done with college. Like we don't live in college anymore. Look at this place you live in. Like, how do you know to pay the bills? Yeah, how do bills work? <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so I'm like, you know, uh, they, they just send them to you. And she's like, oh my gosh, you're so adulting or something like that. And in, so in fairness to her, we went to a military school where everything was taken care of. Yes. And then she commissioned more. in the army. Yes. So she continued to not really have to do everything. Not the same way as like not being in the military. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but so it just stood out and I'm like, yeah, like it'll, it'll, it'll come together. Like it's okay. But it was this low level anxiety. Mm-hmm. And, but then also like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're like at this point. Yeah. We got, we got, we got here. The place that we worked our whole lives to get, we graduated. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I feel like, uh, because when we were prepping for this episode, I feel like we have plenty to bash on. So I thought um, starting with like the positive spin, like what do we like about adulting um, and that phrase and um, all that. And for me, my reflecting on it is it's a way to bond with people or like have a sense of camaraderie. Like you can take comfort in this term because it's kind of like I'm saying, I remember my first time 
paying a bill. And um, you're doing it with this slightly laughable, um, mildly maybe mocking tone, but it is it is a method of releasing a stress or an energy that is uncomfortable because mm-hmm. it's your first time doing a thing and you're like, Fudge. language that I can't say. Fudge. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it, it has that ability. And then of course, with like, uh, the way that we consume information and we relate via social media, hashtag adulting on Instagram, you have Reddit adulting, uh, yeah, which, yeah, which is more of an existential crisis post. And it's something that's, that's, that's funny, but I think you make a really good point because you know, what I said, uh, of these people writing is that they have this sense of there's something wrong with me uh-huh. because I don't have my stuff together. Yeah. Or now, I don't know what I can, I'm doing. I can open up a little bit of vulnerability and see if maybe other people you, will. You also have that vulnerability. Yeah. But in case you don't, I'm going to frame it as a joke. Hashtag adulting, right? Like, it's just, I, I, I totally do have my stuff together, right? Like, yeah. It's funny, but like, but like, not really, right? Like, and, right, and, guys? And you too? Right. And, 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 and I, I'm, I'm not okay. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm, I'm maybe not. Uh-huh. Are, you, are you also like this? Exactly. So, so it's a way of, I think, opening uh, the door. Yeah, showing a little bit of vulnerability, but not too much in case like everyone else really does have a stuff together. Yeah. And then I, I do think there's also just the idea of like it's something new and it's like a, a milestone. And this uh this isn't an example of adulting, but I had like a sentimental uh moment of this morning getting the six year old off to school and then the two year old is going to a preschool. And um, so we drop uh, big brother off at the crosswalk, say bye, come back home and we need to get backpack and get in the car. And the backpack is on the bench and little guy reaches for the backpack and he's like, you know, wanting to put it on. And I'm like, oh, you want to wear your backpack? And he's like, yeah. So I help him put the backpack on. And it's the cutest thing because he's too. Did you get a picture? Please tell me got a picture. I didn't. Uh, but I just watched him. In some this, millennial like, you are not getting a picture. I watched him in this like moment of like, oh my gosh, my little baby is carrying his own backpack out the door. And then he's like saying bye at the house. Nobody's there. But he's like, bye, bye, bye. House. Bye, bye house. While we're getting into the car. And so... Uh, this is not adulting, but this is like uh, the kind of like sentimental reflective nature that I do think some people will use the term adulting, like it, with a sense of like endearment. Yeah, it's funny. Like you, you see that in an endearing and cute way and, and it is super cute. I'm really angry at you for not getting a picture of it. But <laughs> uh, when Zeke first went to full-time preschool, mm-hmm. 40 hour a week preschool, yeah, he had made a comment. Like, I'm doing this every day. Uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, welcome to the rest of your life, man. <laughs> yes. Like, five days a week, eight hours a day. Yeah. So you're dead. Preparing you for uh <laughs> Preparing you for the workforce. That's work. what the school's for. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Yes. That's what you're going to do. Welcome to the rest of your life, kid. Uh-huh. He's three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four. Three. Four. four whatever. Yeah. When we started at Hope. But um, yeah. So I, that, I think that kind of covers like the positive spin that we could have. And so, um, to well, further go ahead, you got well, more? Well, well, no, I'm going to help transition to the next thing. You know, there's, she was asking about bills. So the question you and you see this memed all over the place is why don't we learn how to do this stuff in school? Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, as adults, we're like, well, it's not that hard. Yeah. Like uh, once you do it the first time, like the bills come to you, mm-hmm. you write a check and pay them or they keep coming to you. But <laughs> You know, just because it's not that, there's a lot of things we do in school that aren't that hard, but we spend time doing them. So yeah, valid. And I, I'm curious, you know, the home economics class kind of wasn't a thing by the time we were in uh, school. Uh It used to be like home ec was a thing. Uh And I, and we had, we had a a class called FACE. It was family and consumer education. Okay. Uh, But we called it FACE and it was in the room with the sewing kits and the, and the, the kitchens. So I, I feel like that class got kind of uh, pigeonholed into our collective consciousness as the baking class yeah, or the stay at home mom class. Yeah. And it got gendered in this way that was uh, somewhat negative because yeah. we don't promote stay at home momhood yeah. in general culture. I think we're going back to it a little bit. Yeah. Um, maybe just that's the part of Instagram I hang out in, but, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but that would have been the place home economics. There's economics to running a household. And that includes paying bills as a stay at home mom, which yeah, you are from, not just cooking what, yeah. as you are for the moment, you have a revenue, uh-huh. which is to say my paycheck coming in yeah. and you have expenses, which is the operating expenses of the household. And you're running a business here. Mm-hmm. There are economics to this. Yeah. Uh, that I think that, I think that class was meant to address. Was it not? I, the, the older uh, generation in our, in our audience might be able to tell us because 
the class didn't exist while we were in school. Yeah, for sure. If you're listening in and you want to hit us up on the Instagram post for this episode, yeah, that would be cool to know and hear if other people's like home ec classes did more than just cooking. Yeah, was there economics? Or, there? There um, been. or uh, baby doll pretending. Yeah, whatever. carrying the carrying the, the, the egg thing. around or the or an actual like we had these dolls that had like little chips. Like it was a baby. It was looked like a baby doll, and it had like a little key that you inserted in their back, and one was for food or diaper change or whatever. It was like it was almost like a tamagotchi, mm-hmm. but in in a baby. Is that what it's called? Um, Yamagotchi. No, I think I think it's tamagotchi. Right. The Tamagotchi We're beds. being terrible millennials today. Continue. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, so you had to, like, keep track. And um, this thing, the, this this pretend baby doll, like, you had to carry it with you. You had to, like, insert the card because it was needed a diaper change or be fed. But so those are the two things that I remember from, like, a home economic standpoint. We didn't necessarily go into all the other things. But like you mentioned, there's a component of, well, because it, it like, the basics, the, these tangible to-dos aren't like they're as hard or as easy as you make them Mm -hmm. um so like how would you incorporate that into a class and then that's where i would twist this convo to say i'm not even for sure that it's the high school's job to talk about these Mm -hmm. things and like not to put blame and guilt and shame on parents or families but if our kids weren't doing school all day, extracurriculars, never at home, and and on a screen, like, I'm not saying these are all bad. Again, we do all these things. But in the way that they are so separated from us doing these things, maybe that's where you would have observed. Yeah, this gets a, a little bit into... Um... Just how do you talk to your kids about money, which is which is a whole separate topic. But that's kind of I specific think, to bills, but yeah. cooking too. I think yeah. we're in a uh, and to Grocery continue talking shopping. about bills, but um, we're in a disadvantage versus previous generations because our parents' generation would have sat down at the kitchen table with their checkbook and written out the checks for the bills and balanced their checkbook and sent those bills in the mail. Oh yeah, yeah. And in doing that, you can invite your appropriately aged kid to sit with you and learn about how bills work. Uh huh. We auto pay almost everything. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, uh, how how do you how do you show them how to do that? Right, and then that's where you budgeting do it once and... when you buy the house or buy the whatever. Right, but budgeting and um, like how do you save and how do you give and what do you buy? Like, there's a component where parents do budgeting with their kids, but like, do we bring our kids along when we buy a new car mm-hmm. just so that they kind of get a feel for what it is that's going yeah. on? Like, do you, when you get your 16 year old or they buy their car or you take a loan out, like, do they go with you to shop mm-hmm. for the car? Like, that's kind of where it's, it's our um, opportunity as a parent to decide how much we involve them Mm -hmm. so that when they're 23 or 18 or 19 or 25 or 26, like they're, they have maybe slightly less hashtag adulting moments because they're actually stressed out. Yeah. That's, it's less of the existential crisis and more of just, you know, joking around with your friends. Cause I do think, I do think there's validity. There's, there's an imposter syndrome in us all. Uh, when we first get out into the real world, quote unquote, and that's, that's part of the problem. So even even now, I'm calling it the real world, as though the rest of the world isn't wasn't real. real. Yeah, because because we kids are, kids are so sheltered, and yeah. and we were no different. Oh, I was no different. You had or isolated yes, or we're more more isolated from uh, the Functions. the actual function of of functions of life. Yeah, and so uh, we we don't see them. We expect it to have, and then we expect it to have meaning. Mm-hmm. And that's where I see the extra existential crisis in this because we're like, well, I, I, this was never phrased as important to me because I was never taught any of this. So it must not be very important. But now this is all I do as an adult. Yeah, I work, I pay bills, I eat. And there's no meaning in that mm-hmm. if you don't think that any of it's important. Yeah. Uh, and and to find meaning in that is, I think, the great, great challenge of life to find meaning in that drudgery. Yeah. Because most of life is drudgery. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean it's meaningless. But if we're spending the first 25 years of a, of a young person's life saying, oh, that's not important. What's really important is that you learn about the mitochondria. <laughs> yeah, that you get straight A's at school to set you up to get into a college. Right. And, yeah. and, and again, then that's the next next part of it is that what, what we do frame as important is that you get these credentials. Uh-huh. You get the de- diploma, then you get the degree, and then you get the job. Yeah. Because those are the things that are important. Then you get all those things and they're that you find that it's kind of empty. Uh-huh. Uh, because 
you know, oh, I, well, if I get those things, I'll know what I'm talking about. You found out you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, like I'm still me when I... When I'm still I me! Learned, I learned oh, the class. Perfect. I, Perfectly well said. I'm still me. <laughs> yeah. And I suck. So... <laughs> Well, I think I'm great. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's the nuance our, of this that's podcast. That's our, our toil. Um, yeah. It, it, it reminds me of, and we all have this little bit of uh, Vincent Adult Man in this. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, there's a, oh, a, boy. a show called BoJack Horseman, uh-huh. which is which is in a, uh, uh, I recommend it if you're into uh, humor with a lot of uh, humor, language, a lot of language, a lot of references. Humor. But there's a character that is two kids stacked on top of each other in a trench coat pretending to be an adult. Yes, and they do business. They do business. The business. I went to the stock market today. I, I did, did a business. business. Yeah, uh, and it's it, it is representative of this feeling this that we all have of no, I'm I'm not really an adult. Uh-huh. I'm I'm still a kid. Yeah, and I don't know what to do now. Yeah, and uh, like now, like what do I? How do I do these adult things? And then like, uh, it's just it's a it's a train wreck. But it's not really like it no, just they're, is. They're, and these people who are posting are fine. Like they're all you know credentialed, employed people. Uh-huh. They're just trying to figure out what are they supposed to do now. Where, where do they find meaning? Uh-huh. Uh huh. And right. I, I don't know how to fix that in so many words. Yeah. Uh, if I did, I'd probably be making a lot more money than I do now. Uh huh. But I do think we're onto something with the emphasis that we put on credentialism. Yes. Of, you know, you need, like, you need to uh, have credentials in order to be worth anything. Right. Uh, and also to, to bring kids alongside with the, the, the meaningful drudgery of life. Yeah. And, and emphasize that it is important how you, how you conduct yourself in every aspect of your life does have important and, and culminate in meaning. Yeah. And how do we, like, how do we subtly um, not act like once you're an adult, you'll have it all together so that our Mm -hmm. kids don't think that once you're an adult, you'll have it all together. Like there's a component of like, yeah, I'm the adult and I need to be strong and I need to do my responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah. How do we portray that in a way that doesn't lead to insecurities in those who are entering adulthood Mm -hmm. and they're like, Oh crap. Hashtag adulting. Ah." And you bring up a really, uh, scary fulcrum point of being vulnerable with your kids yes but also not, not so vulnerable that they feel them. not even over explosion that they feel insecure in their life as it is presently yeah because you can you can be honest with them about not having it all figured out but if that imparts an anxiety that's yeah that's what i'm getting at by yeah. overly not exposing but overwhelming yeah overwhelming, overwhelming them better to um experiences that like no like give them some space to develop their brain is developing they are kids like while they're developing they can develop some some sense that uh you can still be you can still succeed through life and i don't mean succeed financially or or anything like that but you can still functionally be a human being and make decisions and move forward with your life Uh uh-huh without knowing everything Uh uh-huh yeah yeah, I like that. And I, I think that that gets to that gets to the crux of adulting. Is yeah. crux the right word? Sure. I don't even know. It works. Like either overemphasizing it or laughing it off. But all things with adulting is pointing yeah. to attention mm-hmm. um, that needs to be explored, I guess. Yeah. It needs to be. Yeah, you need to be comfortable in that tension. Uh-huh. And humor is a great way of exploring that tension and and uh, uh disempowering uh that fear that that's that's what humor is for but it does point to i think a, a generation of people who live in a tension of well no i'm i was told my whole I life arrive. i wasn't allowed to make a decision unless i knew exactly what i was talking about unless i had this degree or whatever mm-hmm. and so I'm, i can't make any decisions for my life now Right. I don't. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Haven't and practiced. Never. Haven't practiced, and never had the encouragement of. No, you can make a decision. You're allowed to think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, with that, I I hope you enjoyed this discussion on adulting. That there are some pros, there are some cons, and it is indeed nuanced. So with that, go forth adulting. Hashtag adulting. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.
All right, the book recommendation this week is a bit tongue in cheek, uh, in as much as I wouldn't recommend this book, but I would recommend if you have it on your bookshelf, and you might, that you go take a look at it with fresh eyes uh, here as a hashtag adult. Uh, and the book I'm talking about is Curious You On Your Way by H.A. Ray. This is a uh, uh, Curious George book that I got as a graduation gift from graduating high school. And you know, we, we've been crossing lines with this book in all the places you go since we started talking about this, this episode. But uh, this book was given to me and it was just in my pile of kids' books that was in a collecting dust at my parents' house until I had a kid of my own. And Zeke loved this book and I hated this book so so much to the point that I, I hid it and probably at some point got rid of it. And it's, and it's, it's terrible because it was a gift and you don't want to get rid of gifts. But uh, this book, rather than following the typical you know formula of a Curious George book where uh, Curious George is curious and he causes some kind of fiasco and then saves the day in a way only a monkey could and then everyone loves Curious George. That, that, is, the, that is the blueprint of a Curious George book. Well, this is just Curious George saying... Uh, Oh, you're going to go and you're going to do great things. And sometimes it might be hard, but you know that people around you love you. And it's, it's, it's the way I'm framing it now sounds like it's a great message and I shouldn't be complaining about this. But as you read it, I, it again ties into this notion that there is an out there where things will be uh, better or things will be, you, know, you, you will arrive. You're going to arrive somewhere. You're going to arrive at this place that you'll go. Uh, you are on your way to the place that you will arrive to. And it sets these expectations uh, that are about puddle deep of what that there is going to be and lands us in this uh, shallow soup of this worldview of these milestones and achievements that once we've collected, we realize are so ultimately meaningless. Uh, maybe I should be tacking on like the book of Ecclesiastes with <laughs> with this one. That one I actually would recommend you read. But uh, this was, again, more tongue in cheek. I remember reading it and being all in a huff about it. And Christina's like, calm the heck down. This is a kid's book. I said, no, it's not a kid's book. It's an 18 year old's book. It's given to me at graduation and it's dumb and it's saying these terrible things. And uh, well, obviously, Christina's exhortations to calm down didn't help. But here we are. And if you do have this book from uh, your childhood, uh, take a look at it with fresh eyes, and it might be interesting to you. That was, again, Curious You on Your Way by H.A. Ray. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and in the spirit of nuance, I hope you found something that you could agree with and disagree with and still choose to lean in. If you're liking the show, please follow us and share it with friends and leave a rating and review. Until next time.